So good morning, Kevin Kennedy from Oyala. Am I saying that right? You got it right. Excellent. And you're head of field operations over here at IBC from the States. Correct. Um, explain to me Oyala and what you do um, in terms of what you're delivering here at the show, but generally, who are Oyala? So Uyala is a video solutions provider headquartered in the States, um, but global. We've got uh, several hundred customers around the world in over 100 different countries, and we're servicing millions of consumers with our solution through our uh, customers. Okay. And we provide video solutions really to help people not just get enabled, as you know, lots of people here at the show, lots of technology to help people get their premium content digitized and out over the internet, but our, our focus is really on that, plus really much more around how do we help our customers monetize their content, uh -huh. and really uh, with a major focus on how do we enable the consumer to discover the content that uh -huh. they're interested in, and we promote that content to them, and then serve it up to them across any kind of device, whether that be tablets, game yeah. consoles, yeah. Laptops, connected TVs now are becoming yeah. much more important as well. Yeah, so you're, you're not just delivering video content across different platforms and, and enabling the distribution of video. You're actually looking at how the experience is working from a navigation, a guidance, and then in terms of the content owners, how they're able to build business models that are really effective, both financially and in terms of analytics, information, measurement, etc., for the people consuming that media. Exactly. I'm Really, the, you know, the world is shifting uh, in the digital world from what I'll call kind of the early days and experimentation phase, kind of much more uh, commercialized yeah. in the sense of how do we make money in the yeah. digital world like we do in the broadcast world. So yeah. increasingly, the major broadcasters have to build revenue models yeah. to support the digital world just like they did in the more traditional linear world. Yeah. And we're seeing a lot of focus now uh, in the early days, it was very much, especially in the States and here in Europe, it was very focused on an ad-funded model. Yep. And we're now starting to see a number of different models, transactional models, yep. download to own, yep. subscription models, so a wide variety of models. And I think what's important is we're really focused on trying to help our customers understand what content is played where at at what time of day, on what type of device, so they can figure out the right type of monetization strategies. Mm -hmm. Some may be ad funded, mm -hmm. some may be transactional, and some may be subscription. Mm -hmm. And that's very different than, again, in the TV broadcast world, yeah. where you had one size fits all. Absolutely. So yesterday, we had the pleasure of Neil Berry, who was on one of the panels in the Connected World Theatre, talking about, uh, well, the panel was entitled the, the Internet of Everything, exactly, kicking off the show, um, what is the state of the internet and how that is playing out, if you give the pun, um, mm -hmm. in a multiple platform environment. And what we particularly found interesting, and I'd, I'd like your view on this, was yes, the internet is enabling the delivery of content. Yes, we are looking at new business models and supporting that. But from a broadcast perspective, how is that really changed in the last two years in terms of content owners in the broadcast space really taking advantage of multiple platform delivery? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of uh, key points in there. One is we're now seeing a huge amount of premium content yeah. coming online. So if you looked even two or three years ago, yeah. a lot of the content that was out in the digital world tended to be short form, yeah. clips of, of various shows or, or trailers, those types of things. Yeah. Now we're seeing a full onslaught of premium content, yeah. TV, movies, full length sports yeah. events. And so that has changed dramatically over the last two to three years yeah. that the consumers can now get access to that content online. Yeah. At the same time, the other major, major shift is around mobile. Yep. So as you know, Yala produces a video index every quarter. We mm -hmm. kind of track and aggregate yeah. the mil our millions of users across the world and kind of the behavior, and we publish and share that with yeah. everyone in the marketplace. And you know, in this last video index that we just completed this last quarter, we've now seen, again, a doubling yes. of mobile plays. Yes. So mobile is now you know, rapidly growing. Yes. It's still less than 50%, yeah. but if you project the lines, you could see that mobile over the next 12 to 24 months yeah. will be 50 plus percent yeah. of all the consumers. Yeah. The other kind of really important thing with that is kind of we've talked a lot, and there are a lot of people have kind of predicted, well, no one will ever watch full length type of content on a small phone or on a tablet. And 
the information and you know, the analytics that we provide yeah. is actually showing that mobile devices in this last quarter, we saw people engaged on average yeah. over 10 minutes, yeah. and we saw roughly about 30% of our yeah. consumers over an hour Absolutely. on a mobile device, Absolutely. which is, again, a very big change from 12, 24 months ago. Absolutely, because the quality of what you're able to see and hear on a mobile device is substantially different to where it was even six months ago, 12 months ago. Right. And, um, and I think what was interesting was that, again, the perspective that I'm not going to sit and watch a movie on my phone. You know, I, I at the airport saw so many kids with either phones or small tablets watching, you know, a whole series of, of hour-long content quite happily, as well as um, adults watching sports, etc. And as long as the quality of that content and the experience, mm -hmm. people will do it and people will pay for it. We had an interesting debate yesterday in the consumer debate in the Connected World Theatre, which was, I'm very much of the view, I'm, I'm a shopper, okay? okay. Um, but I will pay, if I want it, I will pay for it. And I think the premium content perspective in terms of consuming content over a mobile device or a, a tablet device, if it's something I want to see and it's easy for me to get to it, it's easy for me to pay for it, it's secure, I will pay for it. The debate that was had in the, in the consumer debate was people expect it to be free and therefore you've just mentioned there's been a, a huge increase in premium content. Do you think your customers uh, are expecting that there is a window of opportunity for paying for content over the internet to different devices? Or is that something where you think, yeah, people will pay for quality content, whether even if they've been used to getting downloads for free of certain bits and pieces that they're just wanting to look at quickly? I, I think you hit um, the nail on the head, so to speak. I think it really comes down to if you make it easy, convenient, mm -hmm. and high quality for the consumer, mm -hmm. the consumer will pay for it. Mm -hmm. We see you know, a number of examples of that. For example, uh, in your hometown in the UK, you know, the Sun just, watched, uh, uh, just launched their Goals app uh -huh. and basically took that and the Sun content, uh -huh. put it behind a firewall, uh -huh. and are charging an annual subscription mm -hmm. fee and are doing quite well mm -hmm. and growing the business. Mm -hmm. And there mm -hmm. again, you could watch those Goals mm -hmm. apps, a number of different, those goals on a number of different devices, yes. a number of different ways, yes. but they're providing it on a premium service, in this case, yes. Uyala, and they're providing it you know, for a fee, yes. and they're actually doing quite well. Yeah. Because th what they're doing is, they're combining that with their rich set of editorial yeah. to go with that. Yes. So, so yeah. they're adding value Absolutely. to the content, and yeah. I think that's the key. If the consumer sees value, yeah. then they'll definitely be willing to pay when, when they're, they're getting some premium. Yes. And you they know, trust with that. the content owner that is providing that to them in terms of the added value of editorial or um, perspective of, of views of whatever in content they're looking at. Interviews with the, yeah. the team. So again, they're, they're wrapping other value-added content around that yeah. to enhance the content. And I think yeah. that's the key, and the consumers yeah. will pay. Absolutely. One of my favorite channels and uh, viewing habits that I have from a, a device perspective as well as a TV perspective is watching the Food Network, which I know is one of your clients. Mm -hmm. um, the Food Network are very good at having a fabulous broadcast television experience in terms of a big screen, uh, being able to see that on different devices, but also coupling that with recipes, data, information, so that when I go to the kitchen and try and attempt to cook some fabulous meal I've just seen right. on the TV, I've actually got something that is helpful in the process of a recipe cooking, as well as advice, etc. Now, that, I think, is quite a unique position for the, uh, the food network in doing that. In the industry overall, do you think other content owners are really exploiting the opportunity of added value and added information, but aside from the sun and the sports side, mm -hmm. where they realize, this is what I can show, and yes, I can see it on lots of devices, but let me bring something else to that. Are people really seeing that as an opportunity in, in other content owners that, that you're aware of at Oyala? at the moment. Very much so. I mean, another example in a, in a different industry, but related to what you just said, is The Shine in okay. Australia. So they have Dancing with the Stars. They okay. license that to a traditional broadcaster. It's shown Tuesday evenings at 9 p.m. in a yeah. traditional broadcast. Then what they do is very interesting. They immediately take that live feed, they clip it up, yeah. they put clips out on their website, yeah. 
then they work on with their consumers on Facebook and Twitter, yep. engage in a dialogue around what just happened on the show, yep. which the consumers, which dancers they want to go yep. talk to or understand more with, and they use Twitter, they use Facebook, yep. and they use the content that they have, and they promote that content, and then they show ads with that content, okay. and they monetize the content, and again, in a very different way, yep. and they create brand awareness, mm -hmm. and they actually create brand affinity, so mm -hmm. to speak, so those consumers are now engaged mm -hmm. much more heavily, not just from 9 to 10 when the show mm -hmm. is on, but now for several hours afterwards, talking yes. about it in a social context, which is, again, a really exciting opportunity for The Shine. So in terms of a, a new business model, you have an opportunity there where Shine is enabling that profile and brand of the show to be exposed across different mediums and even with different partners such as social media, Facebook, etc. Who makes the money out of that in terms of, yes, people will go back and watch the show, but is there, from a broadcast industry perspective or a content production perspective, is there some tension between who actually is, is owning the monetization of that once it's been broadcast into that interactive type perspective if it's being done through social media and not through the broadcaster's own other channels, websites, etc.? You know, I'm sure there's tension anytime there's shift and, and new models and mm -hmm. new mediums. You know, I'm sure there's healthy tension. But what we're hearing from the folks at The Shine is that while there was some of that initially from the broadcaster, yep. they were worried about, you know, are they going to leave and go to the site? Yep. Um, what we're finding is actually broadcast ratings yep. are going up yep. because they're creating more awareness yes. and they're creating more affinity. And there's also now some cross-promotional opportunities between the broadcaster and Shine yes. with the Shine digital yes. properties. So I think, again, yeah. as the industry gets more mature around these types of models, yeah. they'll find it's not as threatening. No. It's actually enhancing yes. what the broadcaster is trying yes. to do online in the offline yes. world. And collaboration is key. That's the key. And unlocking that value as well as the monetization of that, depending on w which point there's interaction with the client or the, the audience involved. Correct. Absolutely. So tell me, what are you showing here at IBC Connected World 2013? What's demoing on your stand right now? So for us, it's um, very much about, again, how do we help our customers, the broadcasters of premium content, really engage their consumers. Yeah. Engagement is the key. Yeah. We're, we've moved from basic enablement. You can go find content in a lot of places. Yeah. But how do you engage the consumer? Yeah. And, and engagement is increasingly coming down to how do you understand the consumer's interests around the content? Yeah. And how do you understand the universe of other consumers and yeah. what they're interested in and, and drive discovery and recommendation to that consumer to keep them okay. engaged in the okay. property? So we've developed you know, obviously we have deep roots in analytics mm -hmm. that we believe are, are, makes our solution unique. Okay. And now we're taking those analytics and we're driving it into, you know, and I'm in Silicon Valley, so I'm going to say big data, machine learning, all those fun <laughs> things that I have to say. But, but really it's about turning it into business value yeah. Yeah. by allowing our customers yeah. to then recommend other content that they have yeah. to keep their consumers engaged. Yeah. And engagement, if you're in an advertising world, yeah. means more ads, more yeah. revenue. If you're in a transaction world, means additional transactional revenue. If you're in a subscription world, yeah. it means keeping them subscribing. Yeah. So you don't have Absolutely. subscription churn. So that really is, we believe, is the high ground yeah. and something we're very proud of, that yeah. we've got great customer examples. Yeah. So we're spending a lot of time showing our customers how to do that and then how to work with these various monetization yeah. strategies, these ad-funded transaction subscription yeah. type models. So in a nutshell, Oyela is enabling the delivery of content and helping content owners with that, helping them keep their audience and reducing churn so that they're not going off to different, ch uh, different channels, etc. and then looking at the monetization and behavior and measurement of that for the clients and content owners involved. Perfectly said. Excellent. You're, you should be in sales at Uyal. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. Let me just, what stand number are you on? We're on stand, oh, 114. I'm okay, glad Alan's so over there. Okay, so guys, check out stand 114 in the Connected World, Hall 14, here at IBC Show. Kevin, thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much. Pleasure. <laughs>